Um, I would like to dive into a continuous example now to also demonstrate that TrendMiner can be used in those type of uh, production, uh, production lines. So in this case, we are looking at a very typical distillation column. So we get uh, um, a feed stream coming into the, into, the, into the distillation column with two components that I need to separate. I have a temperature control on my sensitive tray somewhere near the bottom of the column. Um, that temperature controller will actually um, control the flow of my steam. And then that, that flow control would actually con operate the valve um, to make sure sufficient steam is being added um, to control that temperature to specification because I know my temperature is a measure of my concentration of my purity. Uh, and of course, towards the top of the column, there's a very typical reflux system um, with uh, yeah, reflux coming ba back to the column. Now, the problem setting in this case was um, that um, from time to time, that uh, steam flow would actually drop to zero, or uh, actually it would it would indicate an input out, an input open, so uh, it would go into alarm. There would be no um, no measurement available, um, and because the PID controller was not aware of this, it would start uh, winding up, it would start opening the steam valve, and in the end, the temperature in my column would start rising, um, and if no appropriate action was taken. Um, we would go into a high, high alarm, and um, this high, high alarm is associated to a trip. So it would be an automatic shutdown of that uh, of that process. Uh, the problem was there was that the the profile would start rising, but it would still be within normal limits of the temperature. And by the time that actual temperature alarm was raised, uh, there was not a lot of time left for the operator to take appropriate action before you would hit the high, high alarm. Okay, so that's a little bit uh, the problem setting. Going back into TrendMiner. Let me clean up my session again. When I open this uh, third example, you notice um, in uh, what you see on the screen is actually uh, my steam flow in blue. So you see steam flow is controlling with, uh, with the feed that is changing, with other conditions that are changing. Um, while the brown line, the brown, the brown trend near the bottom, that is actually my temperature. So as you can see, it's controlled rather stable. Uh, there's not too much variation going on there. Now, uh, in the first phase of this problem, of course, we sat down with our customer. Um, or, or they started investigating what is now going on? What is causing, first of all, what is causing these issues on my steam measurement? Um, what is causing those those sudden peaks that come out of nowhere uh, for them, um, and what is yeah what is going on in the background? So finding a root cause. Now for today's webinar, um, since we are a little bit short on time, I will skip this part. But uh, what was found was that again by overlaying some uh, some layers by using the influence factors, which I, um, I will not explain today, but which is basically um, a, an automatic search in the background for correlations for trying to find out. Uh, what is influencing the behavior I have on my screen? What is influencing that uh, those trends? Um, we found out that there was actually a, a very short but severe spike on the in the steam network itself. So there was a very short spike on the pressure in the steam header, um, and right after there would be a problem with my steam measurement itself. Um, so once we, we we saw that, we tried to investigate. Okay, can we um, prevent those peaks? But uh, unfortunately. That was not possible um, because, well, it was related to the compressor and uh, it was not possible to, uh, to do maintenance on the compressor during, uh, well, as the, as the line was in production, of course. Um, so what did we do? We, we went one step further and we started thinking, okay, we cannot avoid the situation from happening, but at least I would like an early warning. Um, I would, at least I would like to find out what is, uh, when that happens. Can I trigger some early warning so that the operators still have ample time uh, to take appropriate action before it is too late, basically? So first thing I would like to do is uh, when I look at this problem a little bit more closely, so I will zoom in, you notice indeed that a very, uh, very uh, signature pattern happens. There's a peak in the steam network. Um, the, the steam measurement goes out of range and it's followed by a severe temperature spike. Now, first thing I would like to do is find um, when do I see similar behavior? 
this is something that happens uh, regularly. So I'll use the similarity search to search for similar behavior, search for similar actions, similar events in the past. And when I do so, when I do so, I, there's really no configuration. I just select the, the period of interest. I'd like to find uh, similar situations. And in this case, for a minimum score of 90%, I find two results. And when I overlay them, you see in the dotted lines, indeed, they are a little bit different. The baselines are different, but the behavior is still nonetheless very, very uh, close to, uh, well, to the period that I was looking at earlier. So I have now found three periods, and actually it's happening um, quite often. Well, I see, I noticed that I have uh, three events uh, between end of February and early March, and that is the period that I'm actually looking at. So I'm looking at mid-February to end of March, so it already happened three times. So it's really something if I could avoid this from happening or at least take early action before my unit trips, uh, it would be a big win. Um, so what I would like to do, I've now overlaid three, uh, three different signals um, with uh, this, signature, uh, this signature pattern. I would like to create what we call a fingerprint. So I would like to, cre I would like to create um, a fingerprint of the signature behavior. And it's very easy, no modeling involved. Uh, I could create a fingerprint of the whole behavior, but of course, in my case, I am not actually interested in the whole region. I would like to select that early part because that early signature event where the, where the pressure spikes followed by a rise in temperature of my column, that is the part of the, the process that I actually want to fingerprint. Um, and when I do so, I can call this webinar fingerprint. Uh, column upset. Uh, when I create this behavior or I create this fingerprint, I could use this for visualization afterwards to overlay over different periods to compare. Um, but in this case, again, I want to set up a monitor because as I said before, everything we search for, we want to be able to monitor for. So when I open up the webinar fingerprint column upset, as I just created it, I want to detect matching behavior. Okay, I want to detect Whenever I find in the background this signature pattern, um, I want to be uh, warned about this. So once again, I could send it to my in-application uh, inbox. Uh, but in this case, actually, it's uh, well, it's quite an important, uh, quite quite an important event. So I actually also want to involve my operators. So I would send this, for example, to crew A at company.com or whatever would be their uh, their email address. Uh, I could send it to, to, uh, to all of the crews. Um, so they would get a warning and they would actually, as it, happen, as it is happening very early, they would get that warning. I would say uh, uh, distillation U100 or whatever my unit is called, uh, trip risk. And I would give uh, a message saying you need to start uh, or start procedure number 25. Uh, they'll know what to do with it. Um, maybe I could say step one. Um, valve, steam, in manual, or whatever they have to do. So I could right away from the warning already say what uh, what could be interesting for them to do or what they have to follow um, to avoid this, uh, this trip hazard. And once again, once I save it, I can turn it on. And now Trendminer is really looking for similar patterns in the background. Uh, and whenever matching behavior is occurring, uh, I will be warned, my operators will be warned about the situation. Um, sorry, going back into uh, into the slides, what did this mean? So as I said, we uh, we were able to pinpoint the root cause. We were able to find out um, what was going on. We set up the monitor, an active monitor. Um, and once again, if you can avoid those shutdowns because of that early warning, um, the benefits are ample. So first of all, you will have an improved OEE because my column does not trip. There's reduced downtime. Um, Typically, automatic shutdowns, um, well, it can mean different things. Uh, if it's a critical asset in my, my production line, it will actually trip my whole production line. Um, so then the scope becomes even larger. Uh, but of course, when you shut down the unit, typically uh, it has to go very fast. Um, you shut down manual valves to zero, to 100. Uh, the stress on the equipment is quite high. Also thermal stress will increase because you need to close steam right away, start cooling. Uh, put the whole column in, in recycle, uh, also putting um, stress on the on the different trays of my column. So um, a lot of things going on. 
Uh, if you can avoid a trip, you avoid all that stress. So again, once again, uh, you're going to reduce your maintenance costs in the long run. Um, as a shutdown can also can always um, have unwanted side effects. Maybe there's going to be a ste steam leakage. Maybe something's going to happen. Um, I will improve my safety overall. Um, and of course, my operational cost will also uh, decrease because uh, I don't have to recycle that product, that bad product that will be um, undoubtedly be produced when I have uh, a trip on my uh, distillation column. And for this particular column, actually within the first month, they set up this early warning. They had already been able to avoid a couple of shutdowns this way. So immediate, um, let's say, immediate return on that uh, small investment, that small analysis investment that the process engineer was able to do without any third party or uh, other help uh, needed. Mm -hmm.